beatings, shootings, abuse, and discrimination. What happens when people are encouraged to use violence against immigrants? Because when people they use violence uh, against uh, foreign, uh, the government say anything. For the first time, I felt like I wasn't. Uh, I wasn't at home, I wasn't uh, in my country. The story of uh, Nazism seems to, to repeat again. On March 4th, 2018, Italians went to the polls. The anti-establishment five-star movement led by Luigi Di Maio won most votes, but no party won a majority. After tense negotiations, Five Star formed a coalition with the League, Italy's far-right party led by Matteo Salvini. Salvini became interior minister. His campaign targeted immigration, his main goal to send illegal immigrants home and block arrivals by sea. Then violence started. On February 3rd, Luca Traini, a former League candidate, shot and severely injured six immigrants in Macerata. But Salvini didn't blame him. He blamed the former administration for filling the country with illegal immigrants. With the government in place, his ideas gained more consensus. The Salvini decree law was passed and made it more difficult for refugees to get a permit to stay. He said an invasion was underway and that Italians had to protect their traditions. He said that Italy needed a mass cleansing, street after street, with force if necessary. By sharing articles on Facebook about immigrants committing crimes, Salvini managed to persuade many of his followers that all immigrants were criminals, that they were too many and that they were causing all the problems in the country. So violence intensified. There were incidents of people shooting migrants from cars and balconies, and some beat them up in trains and buses. Teachers started discriminating against black children in schools. Salvini never publicly condemned any of them. According to Lunaria, an anti-racist association in Rome, there were 19 violent attacks from April to September 2017, during the same period in 2018, the attacks were 68. The Parti Radicali counted 83 racist aggressions from June to December 2018. In Milan, I met Huda Latresh. She was one of the first victims of racial hatred. She was targeted for being a Muslim. Huda's 20 and has lived in Italy for 17 years, but she was born in Morocco. She's a law student and on the 6th of April she was in the metro going to a lecture. Uh, there was a, a man who uh, started yelling at me and uh, shouting um, Islamophobic, uh, Islamophobic uh, words uh, and sentences uh, and uh, he was very, very aggressive. Um, I was really frightened and I'm also asthmatic so I panicked. And um, fortunately, uh, people uh, on the train um, helped me and uh, surrounded me. Uh, so uh, the man um, wasn't uh, able uh, to touch me, but uh, uh, it was evident that he had the intention uh, of hurting me really. I was uh, really afraid, really, really afraid. For the first time I felt like I wasn't, uh, I wasn't at home, I wasn't uh, in my country. I was afraid of going out. Uh, I, for a bit I didn't take the metro because I was afraid of something pushing me or something like that. There are always stereotypes and prejudices that we can, uh, uh, we can take away by talking with people. In Turin, my hometown, I talked to Fabrizio Ricchia, his regional councillor for the League. He said Italy was not a racist country, but that people were tired of the situation. I don't, I don't think there is a, a, a real problem. Almost one million people, 99% is a good person, but I'm sure that almost 1% I can find 
criminal. And this criminal killed, raped, and makes a problem to the society. Then I went to Rome to talk with Grazia Naletto from Lunaria. She helped research in the Lunaria report on racism. They based the report on information collected from media sources, civil rights organizations, and direct accounts they received from victims. She says it's difficult to estimate the number of cases because many people decide not to report. We, we have a, a process of uh, um, normalization of uh, uh, discrimination and racist uh, attacks. And there is a problem of diffusion of uh, discriminatory behavior. During uh, the summer, when we had uh, some uh, news uh, uh, related to the arrival of a new migrant by sea, this period, uh, there has been a rhetoric very aggressive and this rhetoric online had a big consensus and in the same time we had many racist attacks. So we think that there is a link. Also in Rome I interviewed Maurizio Gressi. He works in the Senate as a counselor and is spokesperson for the Committee for the Protection and the Promotion of Human Rights, an independent network of associations monitoring the respect for human rights in Italy. We have a population of immigrants who work, which represents circa l'8% of the population global, and substantially produce quasi il 10% del PIL national. E sono una risorsa fondamentale perché il nostro paese, come il resto dell'Europa, sta invecchiando. La politica razzista, xenofoba che è presente nel nostro paese ha cercato di convincere le persone, in particolare gli elettori, ad avere paura dello straniero in quanto tale. Per cui lo straniero viene affrontato purtroppo in questo paese quasi sempre sotto un profilo della sicurezza, quindi sotto un aspetto securitario. La politica è violenta, crea pregiudizio. After talking to Mr. Grassi, I took a train and went to Naples. Hilary Sedu is a lawyer. He specializes in immigration rights and helps refugees get their permits. One of his clients is Jerry. He was attacked and pushed off a bus last year. He fell and injured his spine. Now he's in a wheelchair and can't work anymore. Mm, the way they treated the migrants now, it's uh, totally against the human rights. You know, the racist people uh, now having uh, Salvini as uh, a minister, uh, they feel legitimated to say and to act with violence against people. Naples is very famous for its food and the friendliness of its people. But this is also where the majority of violent attacks took place. Here I met Buyagi Konate, he's 23 and is a chef. He's been in Italy for five years. On the 21st June 2018, Buyagi was walking back home after work at night. Then, on this street, two men in a car shot him in the stomach with a BB gun. E poi quando continuato a camminare, la parte dove mi hanno colpito continuò a bruciarmi e poi ho detto, vabbè, fammi guardare che è successo. Hanno realizzato la maglietta, ho trovato il sangue. E poi ho chiamato il mio amico, dopo mi ha accompagnato al pronto soccorso. Ho pure cambiato quasi il lavoro che facevo, mi scelgo, perché non voglio più tornare tardi a casa. Uh, faccio interprete e qualche volta vado a lavorare nei ristoranti. E non, non mi era successo una cosa del genere, perché non me l'aspettavo proprio che mi succeda questa cosa. Mi sono sentito che non sto a casa mia, che è un paese che non è il mio. C'è un paese in cui la gente viene discriminata per, per il colore delle sue pelle, perché ho pensato un attimo di dire perché, perché queste persone hanno sentito proprio che hanno passato tante persone sulla strada e non hanno colpito nessuno, perché proprio a me cioè, la campagna è stata basata sulla tema dell'immigrazione e da lì che è iniziato tutto il voce. Hanno detto che vogliono passare le parole ai fatti, quindi hanno iniziato a sparare i migranti cioè, come se fosse un modo di divertirsi. La gente 
si sente proprio di fare la giustizia da soli dopo tutte quelle storie che sono state raccontate o sull'immigrazione. Also in Naples, I interviewed Narcis Guardia. He's from the Ivory Coast, but fled his country in 2002 because of the civil war. On the 30th of October, an Italian man approached him and told him all immigrants were animals and had to die. Then he started to beat them up with a baseball bat. Moments later, two other men arrived and started to hit him in his legs and his chest. Narcisse told his friends not to react and then they took him to the hospital. He says he's not afraid of Salvini, but of the people who follow him. Now they see one person which have the same idea to them. If you use violence, uh, this government don't say anything. For them, uh, the government sustain the violence because uh, we can't defend ourselves here. They beat you on the road or something. Only thing you can do is to call the police. It's not every time the police, when you call, they came to save you. After the interview, he took me to the exact place where he was attacked, close to the Garibaldi railway station. We don't see the authority protect us. Because when people they use violence uh, against uh, foreigners, the government say anything. We let all go, but when uh, uh, immigrants do the bad thing or when uh, immigrants do a bad thing, quickly you see the minister uh, uh, Savino run away to go in that place uh, and do video and, uh, and, and share and, uh, and Facebook. Look at that, uh, the immigrants they are doing. But the good thing we do, do you see, there are people they are selling. They participate to Italy development. But Salvini and his followers are not only targeting immigrants. Italian people who defend them also get their share of abuse. One of Salvini's political strategies is to share pictures and names of people opposing him on social media so that his followers can insult them and threaten them. That's what happened to Raffaele Ariano. He's a philosophy professor in Milan. In August, he was on a train when he heard the train conductor using a foul and abusive language to demand all immigrants and gypsies get off the train. He reported everything on a Facebook post and wrote to a local newspaper. Over the next few days, he received up to 50,000 comments and messages. People were telling him to die and threatening to hurt him and his family. So neo-fascist Italian groups uh, on Twitter and Facebook had started talking about me and linking my post and also accounts connected to Lega Nord. So this is the post where, uh, the Lega Nord post where you can see my face and my Facebook profile. They were writing my parents' address down on those comments and so they were saying we know in which university you work, we are coming there for you. I mean, the situation was really heavy in those days. It was really difficult. For a month or less I basically went from my apartment to my parents' apartment to my girlfriend's apartment. We wouldn't have heard something like that even only one year ago. We have in Italy a deputy prime minister, Matteo Salvini, who openly, openly and explicitly uh, sided with the train conductor, say, saying that it was not racism. Lega Nord has been using the migration card for years and years on social media and in televisions and they, this cannot n not have an effect uh, on, on what people feel. According to Maurizio Gressi, Salvini's immigration policies are also having other very serious consequences on the lives of immigrants and refugees. The first effect is related to the cancellation of the protection of humanitarian that will lead tutta una serie di rifugiati a, a rimanere per strada e se, per cui facilmente saranno preda di criminali, saranno preda di trafficanti di esseri umani. E I decreti di sicurezza in realtà sono decreti in sicurezza, perché non è, la sicurezza non è solo quella dei cittadini italiani, ma è soprattutto quella delle fasce più deboli. Per cui se il decreto sicurezza mette in discussione la sicurezza dei più deboli, crea insicurezza generale, soprattutto nei loro confronti. Hilary Sardou says that the Salvini decree is against the Italian constitution and full of discriminatory articles. Uh, those who were um, legitimated to have 
uh, a kind of resident permit, they don't have it anymore. So this produces more uh, clandestine in Italy. Understand? They they're gonna be a lot of ghosts here in Italy. I'm I'm scared for the migrants. Everything's going to be more difficult for them, and uh, they're going to be used like slave, and uh, they're going to be constantly discriminated. Violent attacks did not stop in 2019. They are still happening today. The attitude of Italy's far-right government means that violence is unlikely to stop anytime soon.